right, so we're going to take Mr. Jones' video and place it a little earlier than the audio track because it's unedited. And let's uh, see where the hand clap might be in relationship to beat three of the music. Okay, so it's a little late, not to be too surprising. So let's tug it over here a little bit. Okay, that would seem to be right on point. Now we're going to hear the old hissy audio from the phone along with the mixed audacity track, which is here. The old audio is attached here. And let's see if they seem to line up as uh, Mr. Jones plays. Pretty good. Now we could probably spend a long time trying to make that exact, 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 but that seems to be really good. So uh, we're going to go in and uh, we're going to save that immediately. And uh, now we're going to get rid of what we don't need uh, in the audio scenario before he plays. So we know that he claps here. We don't need to save that. And then we know that he starts getting ready to play probably around here. So somewhere in here, we're going to ditch the track. Probably be able to fade him in from somewhere around there. So I'm going to make a cut here. And I'm going to erase that portion of his track because we're not going to need it. At some point it's going to fade in from what we do before. And now I should also be able to take this track's audio and uh, wipe it out. Ninety six is maybe the maximum. Let's see. Now when I mute the Audacity track, I hear nothing. So we're fairly sure that we're getting uh, synchronization here. Now if I put this at 100%, uh, maybe 50%, and did some spot checking, we might be able to watch this slide a little bit. And I'll have to pause to let the rendering catch up. Let's go back here a little bit. That seemed to be good. That looks pretty good. Let's pick up another moment here. Looks pretty good. I'm going to save the file, uh, put it back to fitting the screen. I'm going to save the file here. Uh, so that seems to be going fairly well. Um, so now I've managed to tacit the audio on that MP4, the blue file, and I'm hearing only audio from the green file, and that's what I want. So now we have an issue of uh, that the audio and the, and the video should be synced, but now where am I going to place uh, Mr. Jones visually in this screen? So I used to have Mr. Christensen on the right-hand side of it, and now I need to place Mr. Jones on that right-hand side in and out of the picture to make things happen. Uh, let's see what we got here. First of all, uh, while he's playing, we have to find a good location. So if I tap on uh, the color scheme, it's going to open up a variety of things that I can do with his location and his scale and his size. So one of the things I can do is position him left to right. So I can move and we don't need to necessarily see everything behind him. So that's available. So I can do that. I could decide to make the the heads a little more 
of the same kind of size by scaling him outwards a little bit. I could decide to do that. Uh, that, that could happen. Uh, I could decide I want us to be, our heads to be relatively the same height. Uh, so I could move up uh, that a little bit to make that happen. That, would, that might be a way. Uh, maybe I've gone a little too far in this direction, depending on what I want to see. Uh, so that could work. Now let's see about cropping his image. Let's go over to Effects. Video Effects. Transform. Crop. Now if I drop that on top of this, I should have the option then of cropping that picture. If I go back over to the color selection, you'll see that now I have cropping as an option. Great. So let's see what happens if I select that I want to crop out the left a bit. Whoa, you see, there he goes. So if I want to have a little bit of a, a frame there between the two of us, a little space, I could do that. Maybe a little more. Maybe a little less. I'll put it right there. That makes me happy. I'm going to save that. Now, another thing we can do is we can, uh, we, we, we definitely want to do this before we shift anything of the vision of uh, what we see here. I'm going to raise this up so I can see Mr. Jones's uh, blue line there. Now, my picture looks a little more vibrant than his. So while I have his track selected, I want to do some color work. And this is good to do before you consider splicing any of the video because otherwise you're going to have to do the color work on each separate splice. So one thing is white balance. If there's something you think is white and you click on it, it will make a little compensation to say, okay, and that's a truer white. So that helps. Then we have contrast and highlights and shadows. So uh, let's see about putting just a little more contrast in here. Let's see about the exposure. What would I like to do with that? I don't want to go that far. And that's too far the other way. But maybe something in between with that. Now the 07 is hard to grab by the wheel. So I'll put in 0 0.5 here and that could help. Or I could go in and say, maybe I want something as subtle as uh, 0 0.2 and click on that. And that might seem pretty reasonable, but that seems a little on the dark side. So we're about 0 0.3. That's possible. Uh, let's see, highlights and shadows. So let's experiment a little bit with that. And if you don't understand what those do, just get in there and start messing with them. Because once you release your mouse, you can undo whatever it is you've just done with a single click of the undo button. So uh, this tends to, uh, again, uh, add shadow or subtract it from the image. Uh, I'm thinking that somewhere, again, this, the controls are pretty sensitive, but somewhere in this picture, uh, it seems to be about maybe here if we go to the highlights this will take care of wiping out some shadows if I want them wiped out uh, but I don't need too much much wiped out it will also add detail where it was not before so let's see here's basically close to zero I might like something like that. Let me see if I compare that with the other direction. See, that seems too extreme. So, maybe something just about. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, I, like, the, I like the minus just a little bit. Uh, so that seems to work pretty well. And then I have an option if I want to of considering sharpening too. Uh, I would have to look, take a better look and see what, how his video looks. It looks pretty good, but it might be able to use a little sharpening. Uh, let's look at it as a as a um, close-up. Pull this over here. It's 
see, there's my image. And there's his image. There's his face. And here's my face. And I would say that mine might be a little sharper. So let's say I go back to effects and I probably will find uh, somewhere in here blur and sharpen. Let's say I drag sharpen onto or even unsharp mask, which I find is a little more subtle. Let me say I drag that on here as an option. And if I do and I go back to the color pane, I will now see an option for the sharpening amount. And I noticed a little sharpening right away. It's, it applied 50 on the scale. Uh, let's say I want to sharpen it just a little more. Let's see what happens. If I go extreme, what happens? Doesn't seem too extreme to me. Seems pretty good. Let's uh, compare that to here, which has not been further sharpened because my track was not selected. So that's not looking too bad. Uh, let's see how it looks to 50 50. I'm not seeing anything too surprising. This is looking pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and fit it. And again, if I had, uh, if I showed you the original video next to it, you'd see probably a pretty substantial difference. So I've done some nice things as far as the coloring. Uh, well, the contrast, the exposure, shadows, highlights, and sharpening. Uh, I could decide if I wanted to to change the tint of some things and the temperature, but given his blue shirt showing up so nicely and the yellow envelopes, I think we have a pretty authentic look here. So I'm not too worried about that. I think we're in good shape.